Okay, so first one, um, it's just a recap to make X the subject in this case. Okay, because that is the that is going to be the first step for solving simultaneous equations by substitution. So the first one, X plus 3Y equals to 18, right? We want to make X the subject, so we want to get rid of the 3Y. You get rid of the 3Y by subtracting 3Y on both sides. So equal sign on the left-hand side, X on the other side, 18 minus 3Y. So that's all that there is to it. Now, in question two, you don't have a. Okay, now next one, to make X the subject, we start off with 2X plus 5Y equals to 13. We want to get rid of that 5Y over there. Uh, Glenn, what should we do? Uh? Get rid of the 5Y. How to get rid of that 5Y? Since I don't want the 5Y, right? Disappear already. What did I do? Minus what? Let him try, let him try. Stop feeding him answer. Stop giving him hint. He can do it. Quick, Glenn. How to get rid of the 5Y? Louder, louder. Minus what? Minus what? Quick. Minus what? Minus 5y. Okay, good. Uh, and now, uh, one more step. I want x. I don't want 2x. So what should we do to that, that 2 over there? Divide by? Divided by 2. So 13 minus 5y divided by 2. The next one, make y the subject. Uh, I got Ruben not here. 3x minus y equals to 1. We only want the y term for now. Huh? So get rid of that 3x. Um, Chloe, can you try? How to get rid of that 3x? What should we do to both sides? So when I get rid of that 3x, then it disappears, right? Left side, no more 3x already. What must I do to the right side? Louder, louder. Huh? I, I heard something 3x. Is it a plus minus times or divide? Never mind, it's not your notes. You just look up here. Yeah, how do you get rid of that 3x? You cannot do that, Glenn going to help you already. Oh, divide ah, if I but if I divide ah, Lulu, on the left hand side right. If I divide by three x ah, does it look worse? It looks worse, right? It looks horrible. Don't want, don't want. You divide by three x ah, then the other side also like that. On the left side, you wow, instead you of getting out three x, you end up with three x appearing twice. Okay, so we don't want that. Times ah, times what ah? Right, uh. That's what. We need Glenn to help you. We need Glenn. Uh. Glenn! She needs your help, Lee. How to get rid of this, this 3x? The one this 3x already. How? How to get rid of that 3x? You don't know, huh? Uh, Josiah. Sorry, uh, so I got um, three squares. I got three squares and I minus, minus a triangle equals to or did they say, oh, we go to Y. Okay, I want to get rid of these three squares. I want to remove them. Like literally, what is the action of taking away? By subtracting, right? I'm literally subtracting. If I take away one square over here, I must take away one square over here, correct? For that to be equal. Up. If I take away two squares, I must take away two squares. 
if I take away three squares, I'm gonna take away three squares, and is that what I wanted? I say I don't want the x, the axis like this. So I don't want these three squares. What shall I do to get rid of that? Minus. I hope he doesn't start. What is this action? Taking away. So it's minus. Minus what? What shall I do? Same thing. Minus how much? I don't, I don't want this 3x already. Minus how much? Minus 3x. Okay, um, Glenn, if you minus 3x on one side, what must we do to the other side? Minus 3x. And what do we have left? Negative y equals to 1 minus 3x. And now, I only want to make y the subject, so I don't want that negative side. Iman, what should we do next? Divide by? Did Silo give you the answer? No, huh? okay, what, what is your answer? I'll divide by negative one. Okay, so we end up with y equals to everything divided by negative one. So the sign will all change. Negative one plus three x, done. Or you can write three x minus one. It's the same thing, isn't it? My negative one plus three x, three x minus one. They are the same thing. Next one. Make y the subject. Okay, uh, since Yenzi and Glenn, not very sure. I will help you all learn this. Yenzi, what is the next step? I want to get rid of um, 2x. I want to get rid of the 2x. What should I do? Yeah, see, you learned already. So what is left? 3y equals to 7 minus 2x. Okay, um, Glenn, what's the next step? I only want y. I don't want a 3 over there. Only one y. I don't want a 3. What should I do? Yeah, I only want a Y, I don't want a three. Need help, or? need help. Or? Do you need help? You say divide. Do you say divide? Okay, divide by one. Divide by three, okay. So we end up with Y equals to what is on the other side, Glenn, we're not done. What's on the other side? Seven divided by three, huh? And then? Huh? 2x divided by 3. Is it? Minus? Say again? Left side. You mean this side? Uh, what, what about it? What about it? Huh? Minus, put a minus, you are right. Minus what? Minus, is this your answer? Yes or no? Yes, okay. Um, we prefer not to write this division. Can you edit it? Instead of this division sign, fraction, okay. So it becomes 2x over 3. La. Minus 2x over 3, okay. So this is Glenn's answer. All agree? Glenn, Glenn you don't agree with the answer. Hey, your friends are agreeing with the answer. Why you disagree with your own answer? You agree, okay. Um, I, I don't know why he didn't agree the second place. But maybe this was what was going through your mind. 7 minus 2x over 3. Both are okay, they are the same thing. Same denominator, right? You can choose to divide one of each of them by three, or you can just whole thing divided by three, it's the same. In fact, there's one more way of writing it, you can write it this way, seven minus, uh, one third, seven minus two x. It's all the same. Okay, next one. Uh, make x the subject. Okay, since uh, Yen Jing was helping us already, uh, Josiah, can you help us? Make x the subject. 
Wait, wait, wait. 3x equals to negative. Oh. Minus 7. Huh? Is it plus 7? You do you need help? Who can help you? Hey, Sean. He wrote 7 minus 2y. So, uh, I think the question is, is it going to be negative 7 or positive 7? Maybe let's do it step by step. Huh? We have 3x plus 2y minus 7 equals to 0. Josiah tried to get rid of the 2y first. He did so by subtracting 2y on both sides. So, we are left with this. Try right now, Josiah. Wait, okay, what do you want to remove now? Okay, how do you remove a negative 7? Huh? Add 7. So you add 7 to both sides. So the equal sign over here, when you add 7, we are left with just 3x, isn't it? On the other side, negative 2y plus 7. So what Ishan wrote was 7 minus 2y. He prefers to put a positive number in front and subtract a negative number instead of negative number plus positive. But hey, is there any difference? No difference. Lah. You have to understand this. Uh, we're not done yet, Josiah, one more step. I only want X as the subject. Uh, 7 over 3. Don't know why you all like to separate like this. Uh, I, I find it easier to just combine everything. In fact, I prefer to write it this way. 1 third, uh, negative 2Y plus 7. Okay, but everything is okay. They're all the same. It's just my personal preference. And when I have a preference, usually there is a reason. It will make my life easier later on. For now, you can make you can choose any three of them as your preferred option. Okay, last one more question. Uh, does that call somebody else? It's just uh, limited to the four of you only. Okay, go show. Make why the subject. What should we do? What do you want to remove first? Huh? Hey, sorry, sorry. Ah, yeah, you're saying? Okay, next step. Okay, uh, plus six x, uh, plus or minus? Minus, okay then. Take away the, take away the negative sign on both sides. Oh, multiply everything by negative one. Wow, okay, so become two y equals to 16 plus six x. Okay, then. If I to, what do we get? A plus 3x. Okay, very good. Good job. Make wire the subject. Any questions? What is our recap, huh? Okay, so um, previous lesson, I also show you a similar example about, I think, apples and oranges or banana. Don't know, uh, apple and banana. Then, uh, it's John went to a fruit store, buy some banana and orange. Then he bought three bunches of bananas and four oranges for $8. Oh, wow, okay, all these add up to be $8. And they further tell us that the price of each bunch of banana is four times the price of one orange. So effectively, one bunch of banana equal to four oranges. Make sense? Understand so far? All okay? Victoria, okay? What are you looking at under your table? Okay, put your work, put your work on the table. Okay, now, our objective huh, is to find the price of one orange. Just one orange. Now, you have to realize that when you can find the price of one orange, you can find the price of one bunch of banana. When you can find the price of one bunch of banana, you can find the price of one orange. They are all related, ma, based on this second equation. Okay, equation number two. So, if you are asked to solve this problem by yourself, what would you do? 
okay, if you choose, if you don't look at the remaining steps up, just do it by yourself. It's just a little problem IQ test. What would you do? Okay, I give you one minute. Just think about it only. Scribble down some stuff. It's like a puzzle. Okay, one minute. Time starts now. How would you do this? Oh, besides ending up with eight or uh, 16 oranges, any other way to do it? Or, or banana, or bunches of banana. Right, because four oranges equal one banana. So this one over here equal to, is the same as one bunch of banana. Right. So right now, we have a total of four bunches of bananas. So four, yeah, okay. Four bunches of bananas cost eight over, yeah, cost eight dollar. So one bunch of banana cost eight over four, and you get two dollars. Then you can find the price of one orange or so. Right, so this is another way of doing it. Are there even more ways of doing it? F, which we will find out in the next set of notes. Okay, but basically, this is what we are doing for solving simultaneous equations by substitution. Where is the action of substitution? It is over here. We replace, every time we see the banana, we replace it with four oranges. That is the substitution. So we, we, we end up with one equation with only one unknown. So uh, let me read the blanks over here. Cost of 16 oranges is $8. So cost of one orange will be eight divided by 16, we get 0 0.50. Okay, so in this example, there are two variables with two equations formed. This method is called substitution. Okay, who needs more time on page three? Substitution. This is a major topic, a major concept that you must know for a sec two. And it's not too tough. Hey, so uh, now instead of having um, a banana, apple, orange, we are going to use algebra. Okay, replace all the fruits with a letter that represents a fruit. Okay, so we have, for example, two equations. So you look, I observe the equations. The first equation, y equals to x plus two. There are two unknowns. One equation. Okay, that is for the first equation. Now, in the second equation, I have another two unknowns in one equation. In total, I have two equations with two unknowns. Now I can solve. Okay, individually, uh, first equation by itself, there's no such thing as solving it. What? Why? equals to x plus two. Is there anything to solve? Is there anything to solve? There's nothing to solve. They are, this is telling you the relationship between x and y. When x equals something, y equals something, you say. When x equals something, y equals something. When y equals something, x equals something. Nothing to solve. But when I have an equation with only one unknown, for example, I put an eight over here. Can this be solved? Answer can solve. I can write down x equal to six. So I can solve. So one equation, one unknown, implies and solve. One equation, two unknown, nothing to solve. Not that you cannot solve. There's nothing to solve. Now, if I have two equations.
equation. Two unknown. And solve. Okay, because we are going to end up with a case of two lines intersecting. Two equations, two unknowns, and this is our solution. This is the x value, and this is our y value. Now, let's bring it further. Let's go on to uh, JC star. Yeah, can, can one, can one. Three equations need how many unknowns to solve? What do you think? One equation need one unknown. Or rather, one unknown need one equation. Two unknown need two equations. Three equation need how many unknowns? Uh, how many? We know. Okay, that's it. Uh. I mean, if you have uh, um, four unknown, how many equations do you need in order to solve? Right? So, four equations, uh, four unknown need four equations. Uh. Then, this brings me to my next point. You know, when you get a, when you get a problem sum, uh, let's talk about speed, time, distance, or oh, scary right? They tell you that the distance between, between A and B is X KX. Then the thing you take uh, that one hour to drive from A to B. Uh, speed equals to, so for example, it is unknown and unknown luck. Now, uh, then you also tell you that uh, takes okay, distance between B and C is 5 km more than A to B, for example. Now you see what, a lot of information, huh? Do you want Do you want to do something like this? Let speed be y km. Uh, let distance between b and c be z km. Is it wise to do this? Is it wise? Why not? Why isn't it wise? What's okay one? How many unknowns are you creating? You're creating one. You're creating another Y, you're creating another Z. So these two have been expressed in terms of X. Do they have been expressed in terms of X? How do we do that? Instead of the speed be Y, our speed is simply speed will be X over one, lap, which is okay, just happen to be X. Right? Distance divided by time. The distance between B and C is actually 5 plus X. Now, we only have one unknown in the whole question. If you have placed, put Y over here, you put Z over here, three unknown. You need three equations to solve. Very difficult. If you can put everything in terms of one unknown, you only need one equation to solve. Okay, that is why it's important to be able to translate the question into mathematics with the minimal amount of information. Accurately. So Ryzen run across the way. You see? Okay, never mind. Okay, so um, two equations with two unknowns definitely can solve. I guarantee you, unless there are parallel lines, then there's no solution. And then we, we shouldn't ask you that question, of course, no solution. Okay, so now if you want to solve these two equations, the first step, very simple, very standard. Draw a line across, point equation number one, draw a line across, point equation number two. Because we will end up having to manipulate them most of the time. So we do, do the make something the subject. Are those our classmates? Uh, yes, I. Okay, never mind, I cannot see it. Okay, next. Uh, watch earlier on your homework. What was the task? Huh? Do you notice all the, the tasks all very similar? Make X a subject, make X a subject, make Y the subject, make Y the subject, make X the subject, make Y the subject. Basically, make something the subject. I need you to be able to do that. Make something the subject. In addition, 
I need you to be able to choose. Choose something that is easy to make the subject. If the teacher is kind to you, the question already has something as the subject. Is the teacher kind to you in this case? Kind or not kind? Do we already have something as the subject? In question one, right? In question one, teacher very nice. Make wide the subject for you already. That is a hint that you might want to consider using substitution. Okay. So um, if you look at the explanation in step two, identify the equation that has either one of the variables as the subject of the formula. In this case, happen to be equation number one, which starts off with y equals to something. And we will write down, and I show you the minimum. Huh? These are the things you need to write. Sub, you need to spell everything out. Just sub one into two. Okay, so this is what we need to write in our working. Okay, the blue color parts. Equation one, equation two, we substitute one because one says y equals to x plus two. You sub into equation number two. Now, every time you see the letter y appear in the equation two, you change it to x plus two because they are equal to each other. y equals to x plus two. Every time you see the y, you change it to x plus two. Now, in our second equation, it says 2y equals to x plus 1. 2y equals to x plus 1. Every time I see the y, I replace it with x plus 2. This is the act of substitution as described at the start. Sub equation 1 into equation 2. And now, basics from side 1 again. You have to do your expansion. So 2 times x, 2 times 2. So I expand it out, we get 2x plus 4 equals to x plus 1. Two x plus 4 equals to x plus 1. So this is now one equation with one unknown. See, you created one equation, one unknown. And our bot says, no more, I erase it. Our bot says, can solve. One equation, one unknown, confirm can solve. So 2x plus 4 equals to x plus 1. We do not want the x over here. So what should we do to both sides? Uh, minus 1x, right? So just write minus x, then minus x. And we are left with 2x minus x is just x, lah x plus 4 equals to 1. I don't want that 4. Go on. What should I do? Minus 4 on both sides. So here minus 4. Here also minus 4. So that they are remaining as equal. So x equals to 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. We're not done yet. From here, sub x equals to negative 3 into Okay, so this is what I'll write. Comma, sub into, we want to find the value of y now. Huh? You choose, you can choose really. Sub into equation number one or sub into equation number two. Which one will give you the value of y straight away? Equation one or two? One or two, one or two. One la. Oh, one, equation one says y equals to x plus two. If you have the x value, Y value, straight away get it. Whereas you start with the equation number two, you still need to divide by two eventually. So it is advisable, recommended, sub into equation number one. So sub into equation number one. And then we will end up with Y equals to X plus two, huh? So X is negative three plus two, which is negative one. I will make mistake. X plus two, two X plus four. Well, the solution in my notes are wrong. 
Okay, so now write down your final answer. X equals to negative three and Y equals to negative one. For those of you who actually watched uh, all the videos, did they cover this question? And is this the same answer? Same one, same one, okay. Okay, so check your solutions by graphical methods or substituting, no lah, nobody's going to draw graph to confirm your answer lah, waste time. But you should substitute the values back into the equations. Okay, so the next, the next portion, it's just a quick test, a quick check only. I'll just put it down here. Y equals to X plus two. Y equals to X plus two. This was our equation number one. Our second equation was two Y equals to X plus one. Two Y equals to X plus one. This was our equation number two. Huh? So just a quick check from equation number one. When I start left-hand side, Y value, negative one. Right hand side, it says x plus two. So negative three plus two, and I get negative one, which is the same as the left hand side. So this tells me that you are almost correct, almost confirmed correct already. But there are two equations one. So from equation number two, left hand side says two y, y value is negative one. That gives us a value of negative two. The right hand side, is x plus one. X has a value of negative three plus one equals to negative two, which is equal to the left hand side again. So here we have proven that the values x negative three, y value negative one satisfies both equations at the same time, not just one of them. This was done using our substitution method. So uh, yes, confirm. Okay, if you want to plot the two graphs, they will intersect at negative three, negative one. So at this point, do you prefer to use graphical method to solve simultaneous equations or do you prefer substitution? Substitution, huh? not complex, eh? Lazy to draw graph. But in order to avoid drawing graph and getting the, and to get a correct answer, what must you be confident in? Algebra, no choice. If your algebra is weak, then you may, okay, uh, typically nobody actually plots a graph la, unless they are asked to do so explicitly. Because when you plot a graph in an attempt to solve this, you may end up with um, inaccuracies when you plot graph. Okay, so make sure you learn how to do your substitution. So we're gonna practice more. Uh, anybody needs more time? So the red color uh, not required, it is just a checking only to help us convince ourselves our answer is correct. Hurry, 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 hurry. Okay, Sabrina done. Okay, next one. Let's try and recall uh, using substitution method, solve the first pair, of, solve the pair of simultaneous equation. What was the first step? Go and flip, flip your notes. What is the first step? No, 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 no. What's the first step? Why are you standing there? Huh? Can you just sit down for the lesson first? <laughs> ah, equation one and two. Yes, one and two. So label one and two. Okay, next step. Identify the equation that has either X or Y as the subject already. Sometimes it is given. Sometimes it is not. So in either of these equations, do we already have an X equal to something or Y equal to something? Yeah. Yes, which equation is that? Equation one. Equation one says Y equals to two X. I need you to internalize what that means. William, where's your notes? Ah, okay, focus. Internalize what the first equation means. Really make sure you understand. It looks very simple. Y equals to 2x. What's that to understand? It is. Y equals to 2x. They are telling you that 1y is the same as 2x. 2x is the same as 1y. They are interchangeable. Now the problem is I have two equations with two unknowns. 
I need to reduce it to become one equation with only one unknown. We do so by substituting sub one into two. Now, do you understand why we insist that you call, you name your equations one and two? Because the next time you will surely use it. What are you doing? I am substituting equation number one into equation number two. Oh, what is in equation number one? Equation number one says y equals to 2x. Every time I see a y, I change it to 2x. So what is it in equation number two? Equation number two says 10, 10 x minus y equals to four. This is my equation number two. But I don't want to have two unknowns in one equation. We learned that equation one, y equals to 2x. Look at this y over here. Let's change it to 2x. 2x. We are doing a substitution. Make sense? Simple enough to follow? Every time you see the y, change to 2x. Huh? End up with 8x equals to 4. x equals to half. Glenn, you're done. So we have substituted equation one into two. We found out the value of x, which is half. But when they say solve the simultaneous equation, there are two unknowns. So we expect two answers. Where is the y? y equals to two x. Now, how do we present? Just put a comma. You see, you found the x value already, huh? x equals to half. Now we're going to substitute this sub into, you want to sub into equation one or two? Think. Think ahead. Sub into equation one. Do I get the answer straight away? Sub into equation two. Do I get the answer straight away? Okay, so who chose equation number one? Raise your hand. Who chose to sub into equation number two? Raise your hand. Nobody, huh? Okay, I choose to sub into equation number two just to see what happens. Sub into two. Those who choose one, you probably can do the mental response and tell me what's the answer already, right? Those who choose equation number one, what is the answer for y? Y is equal to? One, two times half is one. But I just try to be extra, I sub into two. 10 X minus Y equals to four. Correct or not? I sub into equation two, what? Uh? Five minus Y equals to four. Negative Y equals to negative one. Y equals to one. Is it the same? Same, right? But is this more tedious? Yes. So you better be smart what you want to choose. Is this wrong? No, you will get a full mark, but your effort is way more than those who sub into equation of one. Besides, you may end up with careless mistakes over here. So only when you're too confident, too much time, you do something difficult like this uh, just to challenge yourself. But please uh, don't. Uh, so we prefer very much to sub into equation number one. Be smart. So our answer will be y equals to two times half which is one. And we need to conclude x equals to half, y equals to one. Done. When you solve, when you substitute x equals to half and y equals to one into both of the equations, it will satisfy both at the same time because it's called simultaneous equation. Okay, ready? Who needs more time? And the next one, huh? Exercise number three, again, using substitution method. Sometimes they insist on a method. Sometimes they don't, then it's up to you. Okay, first step, what is the first step? Table equation number one and two. What is the next step? Next step, next step. Fine the equation that has either x or y as, a, as the subject already. Is it given this time? Yeah, equation number two. It says x equals to something. Something is already made a subject. So I want to 
Stop. Equation number two into equation number one. Okay, apart from those who just joined, huh, the rest were earlier in the lesson. Anybody needs explanation as to why we sub two into one and not one into two? Okay, then who understands why we do the highlighted part? Raise our hand. Understand highlighted? Raise our hand. One rule, understand? Then understand? Why we do the highlighter part? Okay, thank you for your hands. Ben, understand? No. No? Okay. Coming, coming, quick, quick, quick. Versus sub one into two. Okay, we have two options over here. If we try the blue color one, sub two into one. Equation two says x equals to three y minus five. One x is equal to is the same as three y minus five. We substitute into equation one. Equation one looks like this. 5y minus 3x equals to 1. This is our equation number 1. And I am now going to substitute equation 2, which says x equals to 3y minus 5. Every time I see the x, I change it to 3y minus 5. I see an x over here. I'm going to three, change it to 3y minus 5. 3y minus 5. This is known as substitute 2 into 1. This is two, and the whole thing is one. Sub two inside one. Where should we try it the other way around? Sub one into two. Okay. Um, two says, equation two says x. Equation two says x equals to three y minus five. If I sub one, one says five y minus three x equals to one. How to squeeze this thing inside here? Or squeeze here? Can you see that there's, there doesn't appear to be a direct link? There's nothing to sub inside. Uh. Five y minus three x equal to one. How to sub into x equal to three y minus five? Nothing to sub. So you need to know which equation goes into which equation. So this doesn't work. Okay. Substituting one into two doesn't work. We are going to go ahead with substituting two into one. And now, set one algebra again. Expand. Okay, expand, expand. Yeah, Jovan is happy because fundamentals are strong. Uh, we are doing set one work again. 5y minus 9y plus 15 equals to 1. Next, group the y terms together. 5y minus 9y. Negative 4y. On the other side, subtract 15 on both sides. Negative 14. Okay, so we end up with currently negative 4y equals to negative 14. I look weird. Huh? Yeah, okay, correct so far. Next one, we divide by negative 4. So negative 14 divided by negative 4, we end up with 7 over 2. Okay, we have half of the answer already. We've got our y value. Next is to sub into equation number. So you choose uh, sub into one or two. One of them will be easier. We are trying to find x value now. So you sub into two. x equals to three times of y minus five. So 21 over two minus five. 
and you get 11 over 2. So answers, x is 11 over 2, y will be 7 over 2. For those who just joined, the earlier part of the lesson is already recorded. I, I hope it is. Yes, it is recorded. It will be uploaded on the Google Classroom for the parts that you missed. Now, what is the difference? What is the difference between this question and the previous ones? Yeah, nobody gave you the subject yet. They did not give you x equals to something, y equals to something. But is that a real big challenge? No lah. Just choose something wrong, make x the subject, make y the subject itself. However, you have to be smart again. Do you think, okay, first step, I'll say uh, one and two. Let's do that first, one and two. So let's be smart. Do you want to make either x or y the subject from equation one, or do you want to make either x or y the subject from equation two? Your choice, you know? You want to use equation one to make x, y the subject, or equation two to make either x or y the subject? Must be smart, huh? must be smart. Who choose equation one to make x or y the subject? It's all, you all say one, right? Then do you want to raise your hand? Who wants to choose equation two to make either x or y the subject? Really, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for being honest. Let me do the easier one first, okay? If I, and either way, both also correct. Both can get the correct answer. But if I were to use from equation number one, the first the objective is to make either x or y the subject. You want to make x or y the subject? Really up to you. What did the uh, QR code tell you to do? Uh, X or Y the subject? Didn't do this one, is it? Okay, then now we got to do it. Choose stuff. You want to make X or Y the subject? X. Sure, let's go with X. X equals to negative Y minus 24. Immediately call this equation number three. Copy this out. Immediately call this equation number three. I have created a new equation. And you will see the benefit of why I want to call this equation three towards the end. Okay, I made X the subject myself. Done. Okay, next, put a comma, sub into two. This is my style of doing it. Very summarized, just the bare minimum information required. Nothing extra. The format will look like this. So we're going to substitute 3 into 2. What does 3 say? 3 says that every time I see an x inside equation number 2, I will replace it with negative y minus 24. Every time I see the x, change it. Negative y minus 24. So this is what it looks like after substitution. 3x. Every time I see the x, Change it to negative y minus 24. So this is 3x plus 2y equals to 6. This is the substitution. And then sec 1, maths again. Expand. 3 and negative y, 3 and negative 24. And now with negative 3y minus 72 plus 2y equals to six. This is one equation with one unknown confirmed and solved. So negative three y plus two y is negative three y plus two y, how much is that? And y or negative y? Negative y. So this gives me negative y minus 72 equals to six. Now if you're fast enough, huh, you probably would have combined the next step already. Lah. That negative 72, Get rid of it by Glenn, how to get rid of negative 72? 
plus what? 72. So you plus 72 to both sides. Don't doze off in my class. Huh? So 6 plus 72, we get 78. And now, I just need a y value. y will then be equal to negative 78. I got half of the answer already. Now I need the x value, right? I can choose to substitute this into equation number 1, 2, or 3. What will you substitute it into? 1, you sure? Start into equation 1, 2, or 3. Look at which one is the easiest. I want to find the x value. 3. Because I made x the subject earlier on. I made x the subject. I immediately call it equation number 3 because I know later on I surely need to find out what the value of x is. This is the most straightforward equation that I can use. So we sub into equation number 3. And it says that x has a value of negative y minus 24. So 78 minus 24, we get uh, 54. So your conclusion, x equals to 54, y equals to, uh, how much? Huh? Negative 78. Okay, now you try exercise five by yourself. Was this covered in the video? No? Okay, do it now. Do now. And then exercise six, homework. Uh, the video wants you all to do. Uh? No. Uh? Or did it just in case? Uh? That can give some more. Uh? Okay, okay, then, then just like this. Uh? Just like this. Uh? Hey, hey, what, what happened? 